Hi, and welcome back to my series of videos for General Chemistry 2. Today I want to talk a little about how acids and bases relate to human health. You probably know that some body fluids, like stomach acids and urine, are acidic, but there are also body fluids that are nearly neutral, or even basic. For example, your blood is not quite neutral, but in fact is actually very slightly basic. But it's actually very important that blood and other body fluids be kept in a very narrow range. If your blood, for example, were to become just a little more acidic, it would have serious health consequences and could quickly put you into shock. It could even cause death if not treated quickly. So an important question is, how is it possible for your body to control the acidity of your body fluids? We'll need to learn several new things before we'll be able to answer that question, and we'll start with today's video, which is all about the most common way we have of describing how acidic or basic something is. To begin, let's remember that in the last video, we saw that strong acids and bases completely dissociate to give us hydrogen or hydroxide ions in an irreversible reaction. On the other hand, weak acids and bases dissociate in a reversible reaction, which means that not all of the reactant molecules are dissociated at any one time. One question that comes up is, how can we tell exactly how strong or weak an acid or base is? We do that by giving what's called the pH of the solution, which is simply a way of describing the concentration of H plus ions in a solution, and was invented in 1909 by the Danish chemist Soren Sorensen. The pH is the negative of the logarithm of the hydrogen concentration. You might remember that we've seen logarithms before when we studied first order reactions. Back then, we used this equation. But notice that this is not the same kind of logarithm we used in that earlier video. In the first order equation, we had ln, which is called the natural logarithm. You might remember that the natural log of a number is the exponent we must raise e to in order to get the number we're taking the log of. That's different from the logarithm we're using in the pH equation. This time, we're using what's called the base 10 logarithm, which has log as the symbol instead of ln. The base 10 logarithm has a definition that's similar to the one that we learned for natural logs. It's the exponent we must raise 10 to in order to get the number we're taking the logarithm of. So, for example, the logarithm of 1000 is 3, because we must raise 10 to the exponent 3 in order to get 1000. Most of the time, though, it's not possible to calculate a logarithm in your head. Luckily, your calculator has a button for it, just like the natural log button. So, for example, the logarithm of 0 0.650 is negative 0 0.187. Remember, that means that 0 0.650 is equal to 10 raised to the power negative 0 0.187. Anyway, back to the pH. Suppose we have a solution with an H plus molarity of 2.45 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. What's the pH of this solution? In this case, we just plug the molarity into our equation, and we find out that the pH is 2.61. Let's try another example. Suppose we have a solution with a pH of 5.12. What's the H plus concentration of that solution? When we plug the pH into our equation, we get this. First, we'll move the negative sign to the other side of the equation. Now we need to get rid of the logarithm. Remember, the logarithm is the number we need to raise 10 to in order to get the number we're taking the log of. In other words, 10 raised to the exponent negative 5.12 will give us the H plus concentration. That gives us a result of 7.59 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. That's an important step to remember. If the logarithm is by itself on one side of the equation, we can get rid of the log by making the other side of the equation the exponent on 10. We'll get plenty of practice working with logarithms and pH in class and in the next several videos. There's one more important thing to know about the pH. In order for anything to have a pH, it must contain H plus ions, otherwise there'd be no way to perform this calculation. That includes water. Plain, pure water isn't just H2O molecules. 
It turns out that in any sample of water, a tiny, tiny fraction of water molecules dissociates to form hydrogen and hydroxide ions, according to this reversible reaction. Notice that the hydrogen and hydroxide are in a one-to-one -one ratio. That means that for every hydrogen that gets formed, a hydroxide is also formed. So, when water dissociates this way, the resulting solution is neither acidic nor basic, as long as there's nothing else in the water. That means pure water is completely neutral. It turns out that the pH of neutral water is exactly 7. Another way we can measure how acidic or basic a solution is, is by looking at the hydroxide concentration instead of the hydrogen ions. If we do that, we can use the pOH instead of the pH. Just like the pH, the pOH is the negative logarithm of the hydroxide concentration. Notice that because pure water dissociates to give equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, that means the pOH of water will be exactly the same as the pH. So the pOH is 7. We can figure out the concentrations of H plus and OH minus in water using the formulas we saw earlier. For example, let's find the concentration of H plus ions in water. We'll use the formula for pH. We know that the pH is exactly 7, so we'll plug that in, and we can then solve for the concentration of hydrogen ions. We find that the result is 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. That's a really small concentration. And since water dissociates into equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, this is also the concentration of hydroxide ions. And that brings us to another important and very useful fact. Notice that the pH of pure water is 7, and the pOH is also 7, which gives us a total of 14. It turns out that all aqueous solutions, not just plain water, have a pH and pOH that add up to 14. So, for example, if we had an aqueous solution of acetic acid with a pH of 3.20, we could find out its pOH. Since the pH and pOH must add up to 14, we know that the pOH is 10.80. You may be wondering where the hydroxide came from that allowed us to measure the pOH in a solution of acid. The trick is to remember that this is an aqueous solution. That means that this reaction is always taking place, no matter what acid or base might also be in the solution. So there's always some hydroxide ion present, even in an acidic solution. For the same reason, there will always be some hydronium ion present, even in a solution of base. So we'll still be able to figure out a pH. You may have noticed that many kinds of food contain acids. For example, milk contains lactic acid, vinegar contains acetic acid, and lots of fruits contain citric acid. On the other hand, there aren't very many foods that are basic. Egg whites and fish are the two main ones you might eat, but even those are pretty close to neutral. However, other things in your home are very basic, especially detergents and soaps and bleach. As you can tell, slightly acidic solutions are usually much safer to ingest than the basic ones, and we'll see why that's the case in future videos. One thing you'll notice in this chart is that the pH is lower the more acidic a solution is. That's important to remember, and it gives us a good way to tell how acidic or basic something is based on the pH. If the pH of a solution is less than 7, it's acidic, and the lower the pH, the more acidic it is. In the same way, if the pH is above 7, it's basic, and the solution is more basic the higher the pH is. Well, that's enough new material for today. Now that we know about the pH scale, we can start using it to understand how acidic and basic solutions are, and we'll work on that in the next video. Eventually, this will allow us to understand how the pH of fluids, like blood, are controlled by your body. So, until next time, have a good week!